praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good hand of praise. Amen. This morning for our giving. Glory to God. And really quick, I we didn't make mention of this, but uh, purposely I saved it for last. We are having um, what we're calling an essential Christian parenting uh, workshops coming up. And that's going to be next month, July 22nd and 23rd. It'll be a Monday night and a Tuesday night. And it's going to be from 6.30 to 8 p.m. right here in the church. And so uh, the workshops that we're having is how to have family devotions, uh, boy meets girl, homeschool versus public school, impacting your children and grandchildren. Okay. And so there is not going to be uh, child care. So we're asking that you make arrangements. Amen. We want to be able to equip. Amen. Parents. I, I shared this Thursday night at our men's group. And right, I threw it out to the men. I said, listen, we as men, we are the leaders of our homes, right? We're the leaders of our families. And so I said, I'm throwing this out to you because usually the mindset is that, oh, the mom, you know, give it to my wife and she'll take the go and check it out. She needs to know this, right? No, we both need to be here. Amen. As men, we're the ones that should be leading. And so we should be here. Amen. And, 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 and have balance amen? amen fulfill our role and our purpose and bring order to our homes and so i want to encourage amen the men used to have uh, your children with you amen and um also for the teachers i mean all those that teach amen if you're back there with our kids or in the classroom amen then you want to come and be a part of this why because we're equipping we're not just again babysitting we're not uh, just doing child care Amen. We're looking to equip our children. But listen, okay, and I'm just being real with you today, okay, is that we, we can put in all this effort to teach our children, but if they go back home and the parents ain't doing nothing about it, you know, putting it into practice, then it just goes down the drain, okay? And so what happens as the kids grow, they begin to say, well, church is irrelevant and it doesn't matter. So then when they get older and they start getting teenagers, they don't want to come to church and they get older and they have their own kids and then they don't go to church. Why? Because they never found value in it. Right. And so whatever we learn in church, we need to take home and practice it. OK, so I want to encourage you. Come on out. We're doing our part to equip you. Right. We're doing our part to provide. We, we're, we're amen. Studying. We're preparing these workshops. Amen. Making the time to be able to come out and share that because we're serious about it. Amen. There is a war against our families. Amen. Against our children, against marriage. And so if we're just going to, amen, sit back and just let the enemy come in and have his way. Amen. Well, we will answer for that. Amen. Before the Lord one day. Amen. And so make sure that, listen, dad, that it doesn't happen on your watch. Amen. We were encouraged. Amen. And exhorted on Father's Day. Amen. To hold the line. Amen. And so come on out. Let's get equipped. Let's get prepared. Amen. We want to see our children grow up in the things of God. That they can be encouraged and admonished in the things of God. But it begins at home. Amen. All right, Brother Anthony. Thank you. Amen. It begins at home. <laughs> All right, we got a hard crowd. <laughs> but it's all right, because I got a message for you today. Amen. A message for us. Amen. amen. Praise God. So, again, uh, make sure you come on out for that. We'll, amen, have more information regarding that. Uh, let me share this uh, before we get into the message. Um, after service, I'm going to be heading out. I'm going to take a couple days off for some R&R. &R, amen. It's much needed. Amen. And so... Um, amen. Please excuse me, amen. After I leave, I'm going to head out of here like the rapture, amen. So I'm going to be gone, be ghost, and kick rocks, amen. But first, we got to come and we got to honor the Lord, amen, and honor his word. So pray for us, amen, myself, my wife, and my son. We're going to be out uh, for a few days, amen, and then we'll be back with you guys during the week, amen? amen. Amen. Praise God. Grab your Bibles. Open up to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and stand with me once you have it for the reading of God's word. First Samuel chapter 16.
should be a familiar passage for us. And we are going to read one verse, amen, today, and it's found there in verse 7. And the Bible reads, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we ask today, God, that Lord, you would just remain here with us. Father, speak to us, communicate to us, my God. Through your word, God, supernaturally, God, minister to hearts. God, all of us are here. We're all at different places in life. God, we're all dealing with different circumstances, Father. God, you know where we're at, Father. And I pray that you minister to each and every one of us at a point of need, Father, today. God, may our hearts be open, receptive, God. Give us ears to hear what your spirit would speak to us at church today. Father, we ask that your will be done. Help us, God, as well to, Lord, alleviate any distractions, God, any moving around, God, to silence our phones, God, and to give you our full and undivided attention, my God, this wonderful morning. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. You can go ahead and be seated this morning. Before we continue on, we've been in the book of Galatians, and we have just completed, amen, chapter 3, and we will be venturing into chapter 4, amen. But um, before we do that, I wanted to communicate this, amen, to us. We want to just do a, a quick heart checkup. Hello, somebody. Anybody ever had to go to the emergency or the doctor for a heart checkup? Amen. Right? You were having a stress test. Amen. We were experiencing anxiety. Right? I remember we were praying for Pastor Wally. He had experienced something like that. Amen. And, uh, and, and others. But every now and then, amen, we, we need to do a heart checkup. Amen. We need to check the heart. Amen. Because we receive a lot of instruction, right? We, we, we hear a lot. Amen. And we, we give a lot here. Amen. As far as the word is concerned. But nothing is, amen, nothing takes or begins to have an effect in the life of the individual if the heart is not right. It'll go in one ear and out the other. Right? It must affect the heart. Your condition today, this morning, amen, will determine what you get out of the message. For some, many times we come and we're hard-hearted. We've been hardened by circumstance, right? There are times that couples come and they've been fighting and they're just, they're hard. And so they come and they sit here and rather than being open to what God wants to speak to them, they're still upset. They're angry, they're bitter, resentful. And they're closed off. We get like that as well, amen, as individuals, because of the circumstances in life, amen, because our heart, amen, begins to go bad. And as it begins to go bad, what happens is it begins to harden. It hardens to the voice of God. It hardens to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And we are left to our own thoughts and feelings and emotions. And that there is a dangerous place to be in because it takes us down a dark path. Today, as I mentioned before, we do get into Galatians chapter 4. There is some great, great insights and great revelation that we get there concerning the adoption. That we are no longer servants, but we are children. We are sons of God. Amen. Amen. And that's, to me, listen, it's a very important part of the book. All of it is important. But it speaks of something valuable and precious to the believer. And I don't want to venture there until we're ready for it. Amen. Because it's good stuff. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. But a lot of times we just like, amen, like, you know, many times that we just kind of scroll through, you know, Facebook for, you know, messages. Oh, hear me hear that one. Oh, no. Okay. Take that one off and go this one. Oh, okay. Right. And we just scroll through, but we really don't pay attention. And so I hope that today God will do something in our hearts, amen, so that we can be attentive and ready to receive all that God has for us. The heart is important, church, amen. The heart determines our attitude. The heart determines our perspective. 
Amen. You, you know, the heart, amen. It's important because when the heart, again, as I mentioned, goes bad, that's when we begin to see people, amen, begin to fade away. People begin to drift. We become indifferent towards God, towards the church, amen, and towards people, amen, when they have care for us, right? When we start to drift, I've been there, you know, drifted away early in my salvation. And then, you know, the people that cared for me, they started calling me. They were even coming to my house, right? But then I started to resent them. I started to be, man, leave me alone, right? And then, listen, and the only reason they were there is because they cared for me. They didn't change. I did. They were doing the good thing, the right thing. But it was me that went bad. And so today I pray that our hearts would be open and that God would speak to us, that we would not leave the same way we walked in today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The heart determines our ability to grow. Its condition will either enable us or limit us. See, I learned this quick that, listen, people don't limit my growth. There are circumstances do not limit my growth. The only thing that can limit me is me. Sometimes, well, the circumstances ain't right. Well, the church ain't right. Well, the people ain't right. And it's easy to blame other things and people and circumstances for why we are not growing. A good heart then is able, listen to me, a good heart is able to apprehend and perceive what the Lord is doing and saying. A sick heart, on the other hand, is unable to perceive or achieve what the Lord is doing. Now that right there sums up what I was just mentioning earlier, that it's impossible then to grow when our heart is bad, is sick, and we cannot perceive what God is saying. What is God communicating to us today? What is God saying to us? And like I said in our prayer, God is going to speak to every one of us differently because we're all in different circumstances. We're all facing different situations in life. And so God is going to speak because he's a personal God. And he's going to speak to each and every one of us differently. But the difference then is how do you respond to God? Right? And the heart that is sick, it's not even going to perceive it. But the individual that has a good heart is going to receive it. Will be convicted if there's an area that we need to grow in or change in, and we're going to thank the Lord for it. Thank you, Lord, for showing me that. Amen. We might feel a little terrible. Hello, somebody feel bad. That's conviction because we're not measuring up, right? And it's not so much that we're letting people down, but hey, I'm falling short of the glory of God. Father, thank you for showing me. And then we give him praise and thanksgiving for revealing it to us. But we got to take action. Look to your neighbor and say, we got to take action. This is important for us. Why? Because the Bible mentions the human heart almost 300 times. In essence, this is what it says. It says that the heart is that spiritual part of us where our emotions and desires dwell. It is who we are. The heart is that spiritual part of you and me where our emotions and our desires dwell. It is who we are. Whatever the heart is, it is the part of the human condition that is absolutely necessary for a right relationship with the God of eternity. The heart is surely the foundation from which the nature of a person is revealed. When it comes down now to coming into relationship with God, it has to do with the heart. See, there are people that believe with the mind, right? They believe, okay, I believe with the mind. Jesus, you know, he died and resurrected from the grave and so forth. It's, it's a, a belief of the intellect. Hello, somebody. Just like I believe that there's an atmosphere and there's oxygen in this room. I can't see it, but Amen. But the faith that leads to salvation is one that is in the heart. And that is why there are many that will profess Christianity or Christ, 
but their actions will not show it. Come on. Hello, somebody. Amen. Right? The Bible tells us that Satan and all the demons believe in God, but they're not saved. Come on. There's an ability to know God and believe that, amen, God is out there somewhere. But there's a difference in trusting him, what he did for us on the cross, Amen. unto salvation. Just because people go to church and say they're Christians doesn't necessarily mean that they are. Come on. Amen. Now, we don't go around judging them, but we do look for fruit. Come on now. What I'm getting at is very simply this, is that the heart is necessary for salvation. To come in into right relationship with God before God can even begin to respond to you and I and begin to come and begin to minister to us. We need to be in relationship with him. Amen. He ministers and he provides for his children, for amen, the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. This is what we'll learn about amen, in Galatians chapter 4. But God provides for his children. Those that are in right relationship with them that are born again. Whatever the heart may involve, it is clearly the source of our real character. Hello, somebody. This is how we begin to know whether we need to grow and change. We always need to be growing. We always need to be changing. Okay, just amen. Know that. Come on. But there are times in our lives that we begin to recognize, you know, <laughs> I'm being irritable. Hello, somebody. I'm always frustrated. I'm, I'm, I'm stressed. I'm whatever. Dealing with conflict all the time. Whatever it might be. And God begins to show us that we need to change. Amen. Though those are indicators for us. You need to grow. Amen. Right? You, you need to change. Because we get comfortable being who we are. We get comfortable. I go to church. I'm there every Sunday. Man, I'm even coming out on Wednesdays now. I go to men's group. Hello, somebody. Right? That, that's all good. You need to do that. Right? That needs to happen. But listen, all of that could work against us. Because we're sitting in service and we're hearing good sermons, a lot of word. We go to Wednesday and we're hearing doctrine and teaching. We go to a men's group and we're in doctrine and teaching. You go to your women's Bible study, you're getting doctrine and teaching. But if we're not applying any of it, then all of that works against us on the day that we stand before Christ. Hello. At the beam of seat of Christ, the Lord is going to say, what did you do with all of this? Amen. I gave you spiritual riches. Amen. I gave you insight. I gave, I was, man, trying to equip you. I gave you spiritual gifts and even the opportunity to apply them. What did you do with it? And it could work against us because we're not doing anything with what God has given to us. Our character. Right? Who we are. That is what God was getting at with Samuel. So you're looking at the outer appearance and you're, you're making a judgment on the way this individual looks. You're saying this is a king because of his outward appearance. And God is saying, no, I'm looking to the character. Amen. You're looking at him publicly, openly, but I know David privately. Come on. He, he, he's, he's the lowliest child of his whole family. He's been given the lowliest position, but he's faithful out there. He's faithful out in the wilderness. He's not trying to compete. He's not trying to get in the limelight. He, he, he's out there and he's not complaining about it. He's in relationship with me. He's praying. He's worshiping. He's singing spiritual hymns unto me. I see his character. And that's what God looks for. The human heart, listen to me, in its natural condition is evil. I'm going to say that again for those of you that were on Facebook. <laughs> the human heart in its natural condition is evil. It is treacherous and deceitful. You can't trust yourself. One of my greatest prayers of God is, Lord, save me from myself. 
save me from myself because listen, I cause myself more problems than anybody. Amen. Amen. Right? How many know we start tripping sometimes, right? Come on. If your neighbor said, don't trip, right? <laughs> we, we trip, but we trip up here. Amen. We're tripping up here hard. Oh my God, Pastor Wally didn't tell me hi, and I've been, I have to went to Bible study, and nobody's calling me. There's no love, and I went to church, and Pastor Gil just passed me by and didn't say nothing to me, whatever it might be. They didn't acknowledge me. They didn't call me. They didn't, whatever. And we start tripping. Come on. We, we, we start going, then you start rehearsing that all week long. All week long, you start building this big old thing, this big old, man, everybody hates me. Come on. And then the devil tells you, why are you going to go back there for Why are you going to, nobody even likes you. And then you, it's like, we're not even thinking about you. <laughs> Come on. Come on, man. And then you show up anyway and say, bro, where you back? God bless you. Like, man, the devil's lying to me <laughs> because we're tripping. Come on. But that's what the heart will do to you. And the world will tell you, follow your heart. I did that and it got me here. I followed my heart and I ended up in sin and in jail and all that stuff. And it and ultimately just got me back here. The world tells you, follow your heart. Some churches will say, oh, God knows you're good and you have a good heart. No, 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 no. Come on now. The Bible says that it's evil and desperately wicked. Come on. My heart will lead me away from God. Come on. The human heart in its natural condition is evil. It is treacherous and deceitful. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? In other words, the fall in the garden has affected us at the deepest level. Our mind, emotions, and desires have been tainted by sin. And we are blind to just how pervasive the problem is. Hello. It has affected us. It changed mankind. We, we are born with a sin nature. And you see it, amen, at the most, amen, early ages of childhood. We learn to be selfish, greedy, hello somebody, as children. That is why it, it boggles my mind. I might be going a little rant here, so forgive me. But how parents today allow their children to dictate everything. Whether they go to church, what they do, what they don't do, it's like, what happened to being a parent? They, they don't know what they want. That's what we're there for. The heart has affected us to the core. And sometimes we don't, we don't, we don't, you know, the world is ready to accommodate us. The world is ready to say, no, oh, you're all right. Those people are crazy and fanatics over there. Those people, the Bible thumpers over there, just, they're crazy. And the church itself has been watered down now to accommodate that mindset. It's okay, just come. God loves you just as you are. Right? You're, you're good. <laughs> come on, Mom. Hello. The Bible says that our heart is desperately wicked and evil. We may not understand our, our own hearts, you and I, but God does. He knows the very secrets of the heart. See, we, we can sin undercover. Right? We, we, can, we can, amen. Nobody will see, but God sees everything. Amen. 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 Right? You know, we're like looking around. <laughs> Come on. But we don't look up. God sees everything. I remember reading a quote and it said that the plans of the enemy only succeed under the cloak of secrecy. The plan of the enemy will continue to succeed in an individual's life as long as they keep it secret. Shh, don't say anything. 
And that's what our children are being told in school. The Bible says, will not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Psalms 44, 21. In John 2, chapter 2, um, chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, Jesus, amen, the Bible says, Jesus knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. The Lord says, I don't need you to testify of me. I don't need your seal of approval because I know what's in man. You'll love me one day and hate me the next. Based on his knowledge of the heart, God then can judge righteously. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah 17, 10. That is why he is the righteous judge. Right? And when we go to God's word, God, amen, in his word, amen, it judges us. Amen. That's maturity as a believer. Amen. Right? As a believer, we, you know, in the beginning, we're, we're, we're babes in Christ. And we only mature as we grow in the knowledge and understanding of God's word. Why? So that we become mature, so that we call foul on ourselves. Mm, right? That we call foul on ourselves. When we blow it, we know it by, amen, the witness of the Holy Spirit. And then we're able to go to God, forgive me, I blew it. God, I come before you, I confess my sin. And we confess it before God. We're calling foul on ourselves. And you know what's there for us? Grace and mercy. Amen. Grace and mercy. Amen. But when we have not grown in the things of God, then we are unable to determine what is sin. Because normally the heart, because it's wicked and evil, will always try to justify our actions. Because it wants to continue in sin. Well, God knows my heart. God knows that I love him. Yes, he does. He knows our heart. And he also knows that, listen, if you love me, you'll obey me, he says. That, listen, it's so simple for us. How can we gauge, amen, the true relationship of an individual with God? That the person that is saved, that truly loves God, will do what he says. They will obey his commandments. Right? And when we fail at them, we come before God and we confess them. Yes. Amen. Right? We ask for grace and mercy to turn away from them. That's repentance. Jesus pointed out that the fallen condition of our hearts in Mark 7, 21 and 23, he says, from within. From within. Out of men's hearts come evil thoughts. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. That's heavy. He, he, just, he just got us all right now with that text. <laughs> There is nobody. We, we, we all fail. We all fall short of the glory of God. But thank God he's made provision for us. But understand here. Here is what the Lord is communicating to us. Is that listen, sin comes from within. Before we say, well, the devil made me do it. What did he make you do? Because whatever it is he made you do, it came from within. All the devil is, is a tempter, amen, and, a, and also one that instigates. He's there to say, I know you're a sinner. I know you feel. That's why, amen, they watch. These evil spirits, they watch us. They see, amen, what catches our eye. They know where to tempt us with, Right? And so therefore, they'll go and they'll make provision for it. They'll put the temptation out there. They can't make you do it. Amen. And he knows that, listen, they're only going to be tempted because they have a desire for it. Amen. Boom. For individuals, maybe you're not tempted by money, so it doesn't bother you. You'll find a wallet, find some money, and rather than say, oh, it's a blessing, praise God. 
God knew that I needed this. I've been praying. You find it, it's like, man, okay, what do we do? We got to, amen, turn it into somebody. This is somebody's rent. This, this is somebody, man. Imagine that you think that hopefully I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it in and maybe one day that might happen to me and somebody would do the same thing. But that's not a temptation to somebody like that. Right? Whatever it might be, whatever that evil desire is, that is exactly what the enemy will, amen, use just to tempt us. We don't have to respond to the temptation because we are new creatures in Christ. Prior to that, we were in bondage. We had to do it. But now that we're believers and now that we're saved, we don't have to. We're no longer obligated to sin. Come on. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. The Bible reads, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And we say, well, how, how, does that, how does that play out? You got to consider, what do you think about the most? What is always on your mind? That you have to, oh, wait, come back, come back, brother, come back. Right? Come back, bro, you're way out there. Shh, like a kite, bring that thing back in. Right? You got you to bring it back. Because we're always going there and it's not good. Come on. Right? That's what needs to change. Yeah. When, when we're saved, you got to realize, listen, that the Bible tells us, and it's not here in my message, but part of another lesson. And the Bible talks about, Paul says this, and he's speaking about spiritual warfare. And he says, and he, and he communicates, I believe it's in Corinthians, that you know, we are not ignorant to the wiles of the enemy. Right? And he's telling, amen, the believers there is that the devil basically uses the same road every time. He, he's not going to, he doesn't just come out of nowhere. If we would be honest with ourselves, the things that we fall in are the same thing every time. Come on. There's not something new or something different. It's the same thing. Tell your neighbor, it's the same thing. Amen. If it's lust, then it's lust. If it's money, it's money. If it's pride, it's pride. If it's anger, it's anger. Whatever it might be. Whatever our thing is, the devil's going to always go down that road to get to us. Amen. And so, therefore, we need to do something about it. Amen. Come on. Right? We got to be mindful. Yes. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why it's important to meditate upon the word of God. The more you learn the word of God, the more you know the word of God. Amen. The more it's in your heart. Amen. Then it's upon your mind. Because what's in your heart will determine the way you think. Our biggest problem is not external, but internal. It's not our circumstances, you guys. It's not our situations. When we consider David, David was the one who showed up as a young boy, amen, to the battle lines that had been drawn. The Philistines had gathered for war against Israel. And Saul and his whole army, amen, were there lined up for battle. And this giant named Goliath would come and he would call them all out. Send me a man and let us fight. Rather than us just fight all of us and have a bunch of bloodshed, just give me a champion and I'll fight him and that will determine the outcome of the war. If I win, then you become our subjects. And if you win, we become your subjects. Come on. And he would come out and the Bible says 40 days, he would come out and he would defy them by their God. Give me a man. And all the men were lined up and nobody would go out. Till one day David showed up. Little young boy, scholars said, probably around 14 years old, showed up to just, amen, be a blessing. His father told him, go over there and take some food to the men. See how your brothers are doing. And he showed up at the right time because then Goliath showed up. He said, oh, my God, this is going to be good. I got here. There's going to be a fight now. Come on. Goliath came out, said what he said. Ooh, who's going to rise up here? Who's it going to be? It was crickets. Crickets. Did you guys hear what he said? He is ridiculing and defiling us. He's bringing shame upon us. David finally said, you know what? I'll go. 
Come on. See, giants show up in our lives, right? The reason why giants show up in our life is to reveal who we are. Come on. They show up to reveal who we really are. Amen. Amen. There was a king. There was fighting men. But they were unwilling to step up. Come on. And it gave, it gave insight. It revealed what was happening inside. David went out. Said, I'll go out and fight him. They tried to put armor on him. Said, I can't go in this. I'm not used to it. Give me my sling and a few stones. This, this I know how to do. Come on. He said, and it, it didn't matter to David because David was like, the battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. When, the moment you insulted God and the moment you begin to defy us by our God, I want you to know you lost the battle already. See, when we face circumstances, every one of us, and this is why we got to be conditioned and we got to be in prayer. And we see when we go dull, we start to fade. We respond wrong. We're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. Amen. That's when God says, okay, you need to change. You need to grow. You've been comfortable. Because when the giants show up, we fail to respond. Or we fail to respond rightly. Why? Because it's giving us insight as to what's happening inside. According to Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28, we get insight here that our heart can commit sin, even apart from carrying out the actual deed. We can commit sin, our heart can commit sin, apart from actually doing the deed. Right? Right? And Jesus said, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Genesis 6, 5, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. See, it is clear that the heart is vital to our behavior. Our understanding and our commitment either to righteousness or to evil. I told the men, I said in, in some of our lessons, I said, listen, people, we get excited about God when we're first saved. Man, well, man we're excited for the Lord. We're telling people about Jesus. Hello. Telling everybody. Right? Praying for the, can I pray for you? We're at every Bible study, every church service. No, I can't miss. I got to be there. Because we're grateful for being saved. It's fresh. But as we progress, as we get a little older, amen, we start to miss here. We'll miss there. We miss prayer. We miss Bible study. We, we, we go from the playing field to the bleachers. Whoa. Then from the bleachers out into the world. Yeah. See, when our heart is not anchored in Christ, it is revealed in our behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Our understanding and our commitment Listen, you and I, we're committed to something. Amen. There are men and women that are committed to their marriage, but not to one another. Mm. Say, so we're married. But, amen. They're at odds together. Oh. And it's like that. Listen, marriage has been given as an example of what our relationship as a church is to Christ. And there are times, listen, yes, we're in marriage, but we don't commune. We don't talk because we're at odds in our heart. The only hope for man then is a new heart. Amen. Somebody say new heart. new heart. Therefore, the heart is abundantly necessary for salvation and God's righteousness. In order for a person to be saved... The heart must be changed. I'll say that again. In order for a person to be saved, the heart needs to be changed. Amen. 
And this only happens by the power of God in response to faith. See, it's easy for an individual. An individual, we can change our outer appearance. So we go to the gym, we get it together, start eating healthy. We, we, can, we can even change our, you know, the way we dress. We can change everything. But it does no good internally to keep us from sin. There, there's no remedy there. We can move to, well, it's my location, and, you know, I need to get out of here, and I need to move away from here and from there. They said, you take you wherever you go. If you haven't learned that yet. I need to get away because, you know, there's too much drugs and too much, you know, influences here. Listen, they're not the problem. I am sorry to say that, church. I love you with all my heart. I'm the problem. You're the problem. We need a new heart. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with a heart, the mouth confession or about this confession is made unto salvation. So there, Romans 10.10, 10, Paul is telling us very simply that for with the heart, this is what I was saying, not just the mind, but the heart, we believe unto righteousness. What is righteousness? It is Christ. Righteousness is a person. It is Christ. And it is manifested in who he is, his character, his nature, his behavior. And that then is imputed to us because we believe, not just with the mind, but with the heart. That means trust. People come and say, how are you saved? You're a sinner, you failure? Yes. But it's not, my salvation is not based on, based on my merit. It's not even based on my behavior. It's based on my faith and my trust that Jesus saved me on the cross. He died for me. And I put my faith and I put my hope and I put my trust in that. How, do, how does that viewed? Well, it should be viewed daily in my actions. But it's not because of them. It's a result of it. Amen. Remember, as we get ready to close up here. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 45, again, very simply, what's in our hearts will always influence the way we act. What's in the heart? That influences how we act, how we behave. When we believe in our hearts, we make confession of with our mouths. Hello, somebody. I remember hearing a story of a, 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 a pastor couple back in the East who came from California and moved out there. And listen, when you're out there like in D.C. area, Baltimore area, East Coast, you know, driving is a whole lot different out there. You still use a car, yes, and all that. But it's the mindset of people the way they drive. Come on. Anyways, my point is, is that this couple was driving, and they were on the inside lane of the highway. You know, they have that, that uh, cement barrier. Usually, there's a shoulder space. Out here, we have it. Out there, many times, it's not that way because it's older. And so all there is is just a cement barrier that is so high between the highway. And anyways, as they began to bank the curb on the inside lane of that highway, I remember the pastor's wife saying, all I can see is this car coming around fast, and it hit the barrier. When it hit the barrier, it just started to fly over. And it, we were coming right at it. And as we were coming at it, I knew it was going to hit us. And she said, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, oh, Jesus. <coughs> right? And thank God it missed them. Amen. But the point of that, okay, everybody, yeah, that was great. Amen. They're alive. Amen. My point with that was very simply this, is that in times like that, what comes out of the mouth is determined by what's in the heart. And it went to show that in that moment, an unpredictable moment, life and death were right there in the balance. And what came out of what the mouth confessed was very simply what was in the heart. Sometimes you'll see people and they, man, something happens really quick and, amen, negativity comes out. A curse word will come out because that's what's in the heart. And Jesus is telling us what's in here comes out of the mouth. 
it is a good gauge. It's not to, listen, it's not to beat us down. It's to tell you and I very simply, hey, check your words. Because your words are showing you and I what's in our heart. And amen, what's in our heart, God looks at. It's not looking so much at our deeds. That's going to be measured up when we get there. But right now, what's in our heart? Sometimes we talk negative negativity. Sometimes we talk gossip. Sometimes, hello, somebody. Right? We, we we're always comparing ourselves to other people. Sometimes we need to put other people down in order to make ourselves look good. Sometimes we're always just speaking, amen. The glass is half empty when it's half full or whatever. We always have something. And, and listen, why is that significant? Because it is simply telling you and me what's in the heart. And what's in the heart matters to God. For the unsaved, it means eternity. If you're not saved, that means eternity. If you die in your sin, that means eternal separation from God. And eternity is a long time. For you and I as believers who are saved, It is the revealing of what is on the inside. And listen, one of the things that God looked at when it came down to Abraham, the father of faith, the Bible tells us that sometime later, God tested Abraham. Went of the story, he took his son up. Was there going to sacrifice him? And the Lord stopped him. The Lord told him, stop, Abraham. Don't do it. He says, for now I know that you love me. That you're willing to obey me to the very end. Some will say, well, didn't God already know that? Yes. God, God knows all things. But as man that has a free will, God is saying, is he going to carry it out? He's done everything, got up in the morning, got the wood, got his son, went to the place that I even told him to go. He showed up, did everything. But when it came down to it, was he willing to do it? And he was. And God stopped him. And this is in reality, to paraphrase what happened is God said, stop Abraham. Because now I know that you love me the way I love you. We, we are in sync now. We are one. And now I can carry on my plan through your life because our hearts are aligned. Amen. This is why I said what's in our heart matters to God for us as believers. Because God says now we can progress. Now I can fulfill everything that I told you that I would do through your life. Because now I know that you love me the way I love you. And Jesus said, listen, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And God knew that Abraham would carry out his commands and wouldn't deviate along the way. That's important. Because what God already knew, I'm going to send my son to die on the cross. He is actually going to die. I'm, this is a picture of that. This is my love for you. And for all who would believe, just as you believed me. God says, this is a heart thing. I know now. By your actions, by your behavior, your response to my command that you love me the way I love you. And that is what God is looking at. When we rebel against God and his word, when we forsake his house and the gathering together, I didn't say for us to gather together. We do it in response to God's command. That we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. That we should, amen, be in relationship with God. That we should be communing with God. All of this is in the word for us as believers. But when we begin to, amen, be indifferent to that. And when we begin to stray, amen, from that. And when we begin to look negatively upon that. Then what happens is our hearts become out of alignment with God. And it opens the door to the enemy to come in with false teaching, false ideologies, amen, false influences. And our hearts begin to get sick and go astray. In his grace, God can create a new heart within us. David said in Psalms 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, 
and renew a steadfast spirit within me. God says in Ezekiel 36, 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, one that I can commune with. A heart, you, you know what it symbolizes today? For you and I as believers, it symbolizes the altar of prayer. The place of communion. The Jews had to go to the temple. They had to make, even if they lived far away, they had to make the journey to get there. The priests then had to receive their offering and do all these ceremonies to finally get into the presence of God, to commune. But today, you and I, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives within us. And right there in the heart is that place that God used to meet with Adam in the cool of the day to have communion. Amen. It is where we meet with God. We come here together as the, amen, the local body of Christ. And we come together to give worship and, and to praise God, but also to minister to one another. Amen. But ultimately, the relationship happens right in here. The relationship we take with us, you take it home. Come on. We take it on the car ride to work. We take, amen. That's why you can pray anywhere. Amen. When we blow it that moment, we can say, God, forgive me. Right at the moment, I blew it. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. Help me not to do it again. And carry on. Come on. Amen. Because it's here. Amen. But we come together to have communion with God as a local body, but we come together to minister to one another. But when our hearts are not good and we stray from God right here in our heart from that place of prayer and communion and fellowship, then it begins to be revealed publicly and that means here. When a person drifts from the assembly, it's because they first have drifted in their heart. When they've drifted from, amen, the assembling of the saints together, Bible study, worship service, it is because they've drifted here first. And let me tell you a remedy here, okay, before we, I pray for you, us. Because we always think the remedy for that is, I got to get back to church. I got to get back to church. That's, that's only the result, you guys. The remedy is here. Because you can get back to church. Listen, you could be in the church and still be lost. You could be in the church every service and be backslidden. Far from God in our hearts. So it begins here. It could begin now at an altar call. It could begin at your workplace. We get to talk to God anywhere as a believer. If you're not saved, then listen, you got another issue. There's another, amen, issue there. Before you can even talk to God, you need to get saved and trust God. And that happens, listen to me. Like I said, not by believing with the mind only, but with the heart. Listen, when you truly believe with your heart, all your questions about God and the Bible go away. And what I mean by that is because, well, what about this? What about that? See, and we have all these skepticisms, and that's why I don't believe God, and that's why... But listen, the moment you come into relationship with God, all of that goes away. What do I mean by that? Does it mean that every single question is answered? No. It very simply means that it don't matter to me no more. Because I believed in God with all my heart. And God can do whatever he says, however he wants. He doesn't have to give me every single answer. I trust you, God. And whatever you do, I'm with it. I may not totally understand it, but that's fine. You'll let me know when I need to know. And if you don't want me to know, then no, I'm fine with that too. Because I'm in relationship with you. I trust you. I don't need to know all the details about the journey. I don't need to know where we're going before I get in the car. I'm just happy to be in the car with you. As long as you're driving, I'm good. Stand with me today. The heart is necessary. You can't serve God without your heart being in it. 
That's what religion is. Religion is service without the heart. What keeps us? What enables us to experience the blessing of God in our life has to do with the heart, you guys. So today, as we bow our heads, close our eyes, just meditate for a moment on what was said today. What was communicated? Listen, all of us, beginning right here with me on down to you, we all fail. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all have something, amen, that we need to work out with the Lord today. For some, you need to get right with God. You, you're, you're, you're distant. You're far from God. Our sins separate us from God. You need to believe with all your heart that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. And then on the third day, he rose from the grave. You believe that with all your heart. Trust in that with all your heart and you'll be saved. For us as believers, as children of God, listen, we all have bad days, bad moments bad months sometimes even a bad year God is committed to you and I he never leaves he never forsakes but he's always there he's always been there it is us who drift it is us with unchecked hearts that begin to drift from prayer we begin to drift from devotion in the word we begin to drift from fellowship with one another and ultimately, we begin to drift from the house of God. This morning, God is here. He's here to heal. He's here to restore. He's here to mend. It just simply takes you and I coming before him in confession. Saying, Father, forgive me. I've allowed other things to get in the way. I've been tripping in my head. I've been lusting after the things of the world. I've been allowing my flesh to get the best of me. I've been lazy. I haven't been praying. And now I've just got in the habit of not praying. I read my Bible and I'm not really trusting you. I'm trusting myself and trying to just work out everything on my own. And I, I don't have the answers and I stress. And, and then I get so full of anxiety and I don't even want to show up and have to talk to people. And it separates me from you and it separates me from my family, my church family. <sighs> Sometimes I revert to my old coping mechanisms and I start to drink or I go and dabble in the world. It just makes circumstances worse because now I'm condemned. Father, I need your help. I've been allowing my heart to deceive me, distract me and detour me confess my sins ask for grace and mercy and strength to repent from them to turn away from them this very moment this very hour yield my heart to you father ask for grace ask for mercy I ask for the precious blood of your son Jesus Christ to wash me clean and I ask for the power and the unction the enabling of your Holy Spirit in my life